Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Studio 22, our sophomoric episode, episode two. Yes, the wise morons are back here for Highballs with Heaton. Today, we are featuring the Redneck Riviera. It is a blended premium whiskey made in Portland, Oregon, up there where you liberals live. And it is pretty good stuff for a blended whiskey. Small batch whiskey with vanilla honey smoothness and a subtle oak finish, as always. Sitting across from me, looking so elegant and debutante. Thank you. I don't even know if that's a compliment. I'll take it as one. I know. We're, cheers. Cheers. Andrew Heaton, the host of Something's Off with Andrew Heaton. Over the peanut gallery, we have Party Foul Steve, the man that knows all things history. And it's, so, it's no, I was still talking about Steve. I know Tara. You, you me. No, I no, I was still going to talk about all the things Steve doesn't. But your know. eye drift. But nonetheless, no. trust me, uh, my eye drifts over to you at all times because I'm I don't want to look at Steve. Uh, oh, look at y'all. Y'all's hair. Y'all actually have the same color hair. Do. Kinda, look at that. Oh, kinda, oh he, anytime you so mention Steve's hair, he's got to rub his hands through it. I do because yeah. everyone thinks I have a mullet, and that's not fair. Maybe you just like, get a damn me. haircut, hit No, I should just get a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Business in the front, party in the back, right? That's right. And just yeah. buzz that thing up, get you like one of them uh, Billy Joe, Billy Ray Cyrus, uh, the the spike hairdo on the front. Oh, yeah. You could That'd do that. Then. Andrew, how are you, my friend? I'm good. You know what I want to get? What? I want to get an ultraviolet face tattoo. I'm going to unpack that for you. It's a tattoo that only shows up in blacklight, and I do it like Darth Maul. And then I, when I play laser tag, it'd be completely terrifying to small children. That would be absolutely scary. I would want to get like the Mike Tyson thing, Ooh, just nice. on the side, right yeah. into your eye yeah, orbital yeah. Yeah. socket, right there. What would you get, Party Fell? What would you guys get? Tell me about your ultraviolet tag. I'm still wondering about his laser tag adventure with kids. <laughs> you know what? I love laser tag. I'm right. I'm not even I'm not going to even try to apologize for this. It's a fine sport, and also I'm really good at it, and I'm a lot better than eight year olds, and I, I get a lot of good points off of uh, all the kids that play in there. If you keep playing laser tag from puberty all the way in your mid thirties, you get pretty good. You know, if, I've never played laser tag. Wait, really? Never. Well, not once. You know, there's a facility around here. We could do that. Let's do it. Okay. Cool. It's party time, Mom. Party time. What would you get? Uh, I just stick with the one I have. Oh, do you have an ultraviolet tattoo? No, I just have a tattoo. It oh. would be the same. Well, I got like 13 or 14 of those. It would be that. But it's a brown, I have a Browning automatic rifle on my side. That is the most Republican tattoo. I can That's see. what I'm going to get. Yeah. Ultraviolet. Which, being interpreted means don't mess with her. <laughs> <Yep>. Okay. <laughs> you got a Browning rifle mm -hmm. on your thigh? Well... High Balls with Heaton is never a show that is going to uh, keep from surprising Yes. You. Do you have any tattoos? No, I don't. I, 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 uh, other than those ultraviolet tattoos I've thought of, I, I'm afraid if I get one that there'll be like a little detail wrong with it, and I'll look at it, and that's all I'll think about, so I can't get one. I don't regret a single tattoo, but here's what I worry about. First of all, even if you get the ultraviolet one, it's still going to scab up. Okay. While it heals. So people will be able to see your scabs <laughs> nice. on your face. Yeah, so yeah. make sure you got about two and a half all weeks right. Three weeks to heal. Okay. And my fear with the ultraviolet is what if it was just that hint That's, yeah, of I'm blue? worried about that. Yeah, where people are just like, what? Is that, guy, <laughs> is that guy manufactured? Did somebody put him together in a, a factory? I think it's Will Smith. I think it's iRobot. <laughs> iHeaton. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought about, uh, I really, have, you know Victor Frankl? Have you read, oh, of Vic course, you yeah. read Victor Frankl? Yeah. I really like Man's Search for Meaning. It was a very formative book in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, when hanging out with some friends one night, a few drinks in, I was like, I would like to honor him, and I might, I might like find out what his number was because the book is in in mm -hmm. the uh, uh, is is set in the Holocaust. And I was like, I might get his number, and then I, I sobered up with that's a terrible idea to get get a number. That's an awful <laughs> bad idea. That would yeah. not be <laughs> that, would that would be, not be cool at all. Even would be, though the intentions were good, yeah. But I was like, mm, that would uh, any any about because whenever anybody saw it, I'd go now before I show you this thing. And whenever you do that with tattoos, it's probably not going to be very good. So. No, that would be that yeah. would be a very bad thing. Yeah. That would be that would be. A very, very bad thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to take it to the head. And when I mean, say that, here's what I mean. The head holds all the topics. The head holds all things. Andrew Heaton, would you do the honors and pick a topic for us to agree or possibly disagree on? Mm -hmm. This is for you, America. Should those with domestic abuse pasts be allowed to purchase guns? So 
Obviously, we're talking about the people who were the abusers, not the abusees. Because if you were an abusee... I don't believe in empowering victims, Chad. You, bra- <laughs> <laughs> you should just... Nope. Sorry. You had your chance. You should have used the gun when you yeah. had the chance. You proved your irresponsibility yeah. by getting your ass kicked by Earl. Trust so, in the system. The system went ahead and designated it. Yeah, exactly. you're fine. Exactly. Steve, what you got? Uh, I was going to say Earl's got to die. Earl, Steve kind of <laughs> looks like an Earl, doesn't he? Look you at guys him. are a very Over pro-death there. penalty show. <laughs> I mean, we there's a killing. lot of death penalty here. We just believe some things need killing, you know? and uh, That's actually the state motto of Oklahoma. Earl uh, had Inveritus to die. omnis yeah. killing. So... <laughs> So should domestic abusers lose their right to purchase a firearm? I am going to say, isn't being a domestic abuser, isn't when it's proven, isn't, aren't, isn't, that's a felony, right? I think so. It's I not a misdemeanor. So. It shouldn't be a misdemeanor. Maybe in Kentucky. I but... think that they should be castrated. So anything that requires <laughs> castration, well, that's more rape. But let's let's say... We talked about this off air. Like, I think, I believe in corporal punishment. I think you do as well. I actually weirdly, I, I do if it's an option. Yeah. Can I, can I unpack that real quick? Or do Please you want to do. Stay no, that? be Because that was a kind of a means. cool thing we were talking about a minute ago. Because the last time I was on your program, we talked about the death penalty. Mm-hmm. And, and I said that weirdly enough, I, I actually am in favor of corporal punishment if it's an option. And I, and I say that because like, if you're, if you're at home and you're looking at me, I look like the kind of guy that would be arrested for, for white collar tra- crimes of embezzlement. Don't I? Like, if you were looking at me, you're like, he's either a children's show host or a British count, or he's definitely going to prison for embezzlement. And, uh, between like getting beaten up, raped, messed up for eight and a half years, I would, I would, if the judge went, or we can cane you, I would a hundred percent rather be caned. And so I think that a lot of the time, if it's a nonviolent crime, they should give you the option of corporal punishment because I can I can keep doing my job and putting money in the economy and not suck up your money in prison and that kind of thing. This is spoken like a personal, just like a dude who has never been uh, hit by a bamboo fishing pole by his grandfather. Guil- guilty as charged. Me, trust me when I tell you that I cane been, and thing. I, you know what? I haven't been raped in prison either. Though, no. and between the two, well, I'm gonna go with I'm know. gonna go with a cane. Well. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about my irrefutable logic right there. I'm not going exp- <laughs> to talk about my experiences with men who wanted a piece of this sweet country apple. But I will tell you that uh, to get caned is quite an experience. Let me tell you, those mm. switches will bring the blood, my friend. But I, I would probably have to agree with the fact Eight that years I'm okay. over two weeks though. I'd rather yeah, do the two weeks. I mean, I might not be able to sit down for six weeks. But Either by way, God, just draw those blisters. But no, I think that if you beat a woman. Uh, this could get in. This is an interesting topic. I'm here. so glad we're drinking, Chad. If you beat a woman, then we should be able to beat on you a little bit. Like a dude ought to get backhanded a little bit, you yeah, know? Like okay. introduce him to the five fingers. Like look yeah, at these yeah. knuckles. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking. Is let's let's slap them around a little bit. Yeah. And no, they shouldn't be allowed to have guns. Although domestic abusers, they're not the ones who are necessarily using guns to met to domestically abuse. Well, the the re, uh, I'm now I'm putting that on guys because if it's a girl, yeah. occasionally there are some panty waist beta males that are out there getting beta beat male. up by the women in their life. So should we be allowed to beat the women? I say, why not? Well, I say uh, <laughs> I hitting a woman outside of sex is no. okay. But yeah. I, look, they're high fiving <laughs> on that. I'm just going to shrink into the shrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> you all, so you all go ahead and have your conversation. Though? I'll come back in a minute. <laughs> so what do you say? Uh, yeah. Should women be spanked? Uh, yeah. Uh, but I want to go back to the, uh, the the domestic abuse gun thing. Oh, we were talking about uh, that. Yeah. I, uh, yes, I would say you can have your gun confiscated for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I, I, I think that, you know, broadly speaking, you have a right to defend yourself. And that's the, 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 that's the individual right behind the Second Amendment. You have a right to defend yourself. It's not exhaustive. You, can't have, you don't always get a gun. You, you're not entitled to a gun if you're in prison. So there are situations in which you can abrogate that right. And with domestic abuse, there is a very high correlation between domestic abuse and uh, gun murder. Uh, and so if, if you look at that, I'm like, you, you violated the law and you're a uh, higher risk for committing crime with a gun. Yeah, I think under that circumstance, I'm okay with taking your gun away.
Yeah, I think we agree on that topic. Okay, I think nice. we should. I think anything I, I that read, you can I, use. I looked at that and I was like, oh no, this is going to be one no, where I'm. If you're, if you're, no, if I'm you're a, a violent person, again. I think any means that like you shouldn't be able to own a baseball bat or frying pan <laughs> or fly swatter or wooden spoon. Like if you're committed to violence, you're going to find ways. No knives, no butcher, none of that. Did you see? Uh, so recent headlines: Bernie Sanders said that he thinks that felons inside the penitentiary system in America should be allowed to vote while they're mm. in prison. What are your thoughts on that? I actually do think they, they should be allowed to vote. Yeah. Come on. Uh, I, I don't think that's something that should be abrogated by, by virtue. In the same mm-hmm. way that, like, I don't want to exile anybody. Like, I don't think we really, like, the Roman Empire used to do that. We don't, we don't exile people. You're still, a member of, you're still a member of the community. And there's certain, there are certain rights that aren't abrogated. Uh, you know, you don't, if you're in prison, we can't dictate to you what, what religion you are. You get to maintain your Christianity or your lack thereof, whatever you want to do. That that is that conscience is still up to you, right? Uh, I would say with voting, same thing. I think you should. I think you should be able to uh, be able to run from prison. Um, I think that actually be a pretty fun race if you're running for prison. Traffic camp. <laughs> I think that was probably a lot of fun. But also, I think you should be able to vote. Um, and I, I say it for a couple of reasons. Um, they should leave the gate open for like 30 minutes a day just to see who <laughs> takes a shot, you know? <laughs> like, they should be trying to get through the, the Indiana Jones and the uh, Last Crusade when he had to m- make his way through that maze there, of There are a lot of ways we can make prison more fun. Actually, you know what? In Oklahoma, we have a, a prison rodeo. We have the, uh, the McAllister, oh, yes, you do, McAllister prison rodeo that I've been to. I think uh, Trump would, he would take the vote in prisons. Uh, I think he, he would go in it and he, own them. He might. I he might. I don't know. It would do something interesting. Like so, Oklahoma, where I'm from, which is the probably the second reddest state in the union. I think now after we're like the holster of the Bible Belt. Utah's the buckle. Uh, so we're we're definitely we're the reddest state, save maybe Utah. But uh, we also have the highest amount of felons in the country, and and maybe the world. I don't know because America in- incarcerates more than anybody else in the entire planet, including China, which has a billion people, right? Mm-hmm. So I suspect that if you gave everybody the right to vote, it would modify. Like Oklahoma would probably be a lot more forgiving of drug crimes, I think, because a lot of the people that are in our prisons are there for meth. And uh, while uh, there's you know there's all sorts of issues surrounding that, like I, I do think there's a difference between nonviolent crime and violent crime. So I, it might it might alter some stuff. Well, thank God for Donald Trump and his prison reform. There you go. You know what? Hats off to him for his prison reform. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not a Trump fan, but uh, he's you know he's he's gone into criminal justice and he's done yeah. a great job with that, and I'm really glad he has. Well, that's because Donald Trump is a left of center uh, a politician. He's not right of center. He's not a Republican. He's not even concerned. I, he's yeah, left I, of I hesitate to eat in the same way that I won't put me on that spectrum. I don't know that you should put Trump Donald on that Trump spectrum. Donald Trump is either. a left of center politician. That's why people on the left are going so crazy. But here's what I'll challenge with you on the right to vote if you're a felon okay. in prison. So you talked about right, or you talked about people's freedom of religion and things mm-hmm. like that. So your freedom of religion is actually a right. You have the right to pursue religion. You don't have the right to vote. You have the privilege to vote. And that's why I say that, no, if you are going to be a felon and you forfeit your privilege of gun ownership, you should also have to forfeit your privilege to be able to vote. Because voting's mm-hmm. not necessarily a right. It's something we fought for, and, and we gave ourselves the the ability to do it. But that's why people can abstain from it. And there's people who, you know, party foul Steve. He's never voted in his life. And he's well, practically 60. I, you know, he's coming around. But what about the people that have served their time? They they were a felon. They've served their time. They get out. They're now a member of society. That's, a, that's that another discussion. I, I, I'd, I'd be for that. Yeah. No, Andrew? I, I think I, I think that if, if you've uh, I, I think we make uh, we make things very, very difficult for people that are getting out of prison. Absolutely. If, if you've served your time, uh, I, I want you to come back into the community. I want you to get a job. And, and I, I don't wish you ill if you've served your time. Uh, so if, if they're out, then like welcome back. Like I think they should be allowed to vote for sure. I agree. You have paid your price, and that is the deal. And I'd say to any person out there that adheres to the Christian faith who says, "Hey, look, Jesus paid the price on the cross. I'm going to adhere to the expiation of my sins because of His sacrifice." Well, if a person has made their sacrifice and they've paid their debt, then their sin should no longer count against them. Is there a record of it? There will always be a record of it because that's human nature. But yeah, I agree with you. Unless your name is Jesse Smollett and you can have it <laughs> esponged. <laughs> Just drop it. Yeah, so, But no, I, uh, I, I always believe, in, and I think that's one area where you and I totally agree. I think you err on the side of grace. Yeah. And that is where people, they're, they're, we need a society that embraces forgiveness and graciousness and mercy and things like that because at the end of the day, we are still human beings and mm-hmm. people do a lot of crazy things. 
some they mean to do, some they don't. I really regret the time uh, that I spent in the Ford administration in the 70s. I did a lot of things I'm not proud of. And, you know, I'm glad that I've been able to rehabilitate. But wasn't Watergate a fun little endeavor? I mean, was, let me tell you something. Was that break-in was, a, was a trip, dude. I was like, y'all will never get away with that. And they're like, come on, do it with us. And I was like, I got nothing else to do, and it's a hotel. Let's break in and have fun. You know, Tricky Dick. Man, those were the days. Tricky Dick. But, no, uh, should I think we've come to the conclusion, if you beat a woman, you can't have a gun because you might beat her with it. And okay. there you go. Yeah. High balls with Heaton. Stay tuned. We'll be back very, very soon with episode three and a brand new topic. Cheers, my Cheers. friend. Cheers. You liberal son of a... <laughs>